Hey guys, it's Abby with The Bead Place, and today you're gonna learn how to make these really fun wire-wrapped heart earrings. These were a variation of a design discovered by our very dear friend Terry, and so she taught a workshop here on how to make them, and I'm going to share that with you right here today. So we have 12 gauge aluminum wire. This is really fun patterned wire. That's what these are made out of. I'm gonna cut a foot of this wire, and that's gonna give me six inches on each earring to work with. Now that's gonna get us some very big earrings, um, but it's easier for me to show you with something bigger. You can see it a little easier. So we have a foot of wire here. We're gonna cut this in half. So we have six inch pieces. You can, of course, use less wire. This was a three inch piece. This was a four inch piece, but the hearts will look different no matter how you, how you put it together, they'll end up different sizes. It doesn't matter what wire you start with, you just kind of have to wing it and, and put it together how you want. So if you want an asymmetrical heart, don't use the exact middle when you make the first bend. If you want a uh, more symmetrical heart, aim for the middle. No guarantees that you'll get a symmetrical heart, but if you try hard, you can you can probably do it. So find the middle and make a V. And then match that same length with the other wire. Don't just wing it if you are picky. So match that same length and we're using our chain nose pliers to do that. So we have V's here. Now what we're gonna do is use your round nose pliers to curl the ends in. So just grab the very end and curl it in. Do the same thing on the other side. Grab the end, curl it in. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this one. Grab the end, curl it in. Grab the end, curl it in. From here on out, I'm just gonna be showing you with one, but you're gonna to wanna to repeat these steps with both. So what you can do is use your fingers or the pliers to continue curling these in until you have a heart shape that you're satisfied with. So you can see how I just curled and made an open little spiral. You can do the same thing with this side. You can have one side taller than the other. That's what I like to do, but it's totally up to you. So just keep curling it in. You can make the heart shorter by curling and curling and curling. You can make it taller by just stretching it out and just really play with the shape until you are satisfied with the way it looks. So make sure that you have completed two hearts before you start wire wrapping because you wanna start with the same shapes. So I'm gonna do that and I'll come back to you. So now that you have two hearts that are the same, what you're gonna do is pick a side to put your crystals on. I like to choose the longer side to do my crystals because there's more bling, more room for bling that way. So pick a color of wire in 26 gauge that matches the wire that you're using. Now I'm using this fun pattern wire that we talked about earlier. This is the 12 gauge aluminum patterned wire. What's cool about this is if you are new to wire and you put some tool marks in your wire, there's already scratches in it that are supposed to be there. So your scratches aren't gonna show up and be super obvious. So that's fun. But like on this one, the black wire, you'd probably wanna pick black 26 gauge wire to wire the smaller beads on so it just kinda disappears. So pick a wire that works with the wire that you're using already. So I'm gonna cut 12 inches of 26 gauge craft wire here. And so this is a soft temperament wire, very easy to work with. And 12 inches is approximately what you wanna use. Now you'll have leftovers, obviously. The more, uh, the, the smaller the wire, it, or the smaller the heart is that you're making, um, the less wire you'll need, but 12 inches is a good place to start. So I'm gonna bring in for a closer look. Okay, so now that you have a better angle, I'm going to start with my 12 inch piece of wire and hold about an inch of it upright from the heart. 
going to use that inch to spiral or to lash on to the wire here. So I'm just going to spiral about three times and leave that tail end sticking up when you do this. And that is going to help us kind of grab onto it. So essentially we're just kind of like sewing with the wire and we're spiraling it on to start with. So we're securing it nice and tight and we need that little tail to grab onto so we can pull it tight. So sew on or coil on about three times and then we can start adding beads. So I like to add about 12 beads per earring. That's my number, but you can do what works best for you. So you can see maybe that I have coiled this on here right at the top. And then I'm going to bring the beads down this side here. So use the, the end of the... Um, wire to your advantage as like a needle so you can use that to kind of scoop the beads up I'm working on a handy dandy bead mat here so scoop your bead up bring it down to the wire and then take the wire and wrap it through the heart so we're just coiling it on so bring it through, hold it upright, and you've got a bead on already. So pick up another bead. Oh, come on. So pick up another bead, hold it, poke the wire through, and we're just spiraling these beads on. Make sure to stay consistent with the wraps that you're doing, the direction of the wraps, and you'll be fine. So you can see we're just wrapping it on. Again, pick up another bead, bring it down, hold that bead as you bring the wire through the heart, and bring it back up. So you can see we've got that. You can kind of push them into place if you want and just keep tight tension and we will be done in no time. So string a bead down, hold on to it and go through the heart from one side to the other and bring it back up. So you can see we're working the beads down the side and try to be neat with your wire, but the cool thing about using a smaller wire that's the same size as your bigger wire is if you're not super neat, it'll disappear so no one will see it they're not going to be that close to you and if they are they probably don't care so again hold on bring it up and you can just kind of eyeball it um you can keep the tension fairly consistent like the spaces between the beads um but 12 generally fits anywhere from about a three inch wire to a six inch wire. You can get them all on there and kind of spread it apart or squish them together as necessary in order to get them all on the way you want them. So you can see I'm kind of running out of room here because I'm doing this really loose. So I have a few more beads that I'd like to fit on. So I'm just gonna squish these beads together just like that to make more room. Make sure to keep pulling on your tail end. And if your wire is slipping down as you work, remember to kind of grab onto this tail end that we left and that's gonna help us put it in place. So I'm gonna add my last few beads and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I am adding my very last bead into my very last space and I'm going to take the wire through just like we did before, just like that. And now I'm going to coil at least three times in order to secure it. So coil, 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 
And if you want to do a few more times, that's fine. I think three is sufficient. So now we're going to take our flush cutter. Flush, not flesh. And trim the tail ends off. And if you want, you can use either a nylon jaw pliers or your chain nose pliers to carefully tuck any tail ends down that might still be sticking out. So just mush, mush, mush. And look at that, how cool is that? So you can adjust any tension issues very easily by just kind of pushing the beads to where they need to go. And we have this very cool earring piece. So, you are going to repeat these steps on this earring, or I'm going to repeat those steps on this earring, and I'll be back to you when I'm done. Okay, so I have two complete hearts, and got the crystals on the matching long side. So now what we're going to do is take our jump rings and add them in. So I have two bigger jump rings, two little jump rings, and that's just so they hang in the right direction when you put them in the ear wire. So I'm gonna hook my bigger jump ring through the taller side of the heart. You could do it through the that side of the heart if you wanted, and the crystals will all hang at the bottom. That's fine. You can hook it over the crystals if you want. It's totally up to you. I like to put it right here. And again, we're opening and closing the jump ring. If you've been watching our videos for a while, you know the drill. Opening and closing the jump ring sideways, always. So you're opening and closing the jump ring like this and never like this. The reason why we do that is because when you open it like this, it's gonna be really hard to get back in that original circle position. So we always wanna make sure that we're opening and closing it like this. So how I like to do that is I will hold the jump ring with one pair of pliers going in sideways so that the break of the jump ring is at the top here at 12 o'clock. I'm gonna take my other pliers in straight up and down and I'm just going to rotate my wrist so that it opens the jump ring like that. I'm gonna hook that into the earring and close it in the same way. We're gonna do the same thing with oval jump rings as well. Hold with the break at 12 o'clock. Open it. Hook it in the other jump ring that we have on the earring already. And then hook that right into your ear wire. Now, the most difficult part of this whole project, the hardest part, is coming up. You ready for this? We're gonna open it, we're gonna hook it in, and now we have to make sure we're hanging it from the correct side. So we're gonna put the ear wire through in the right direction. You wouldn't think that would be the hardest part, but trust me, it is. So hook it in, are we good? I think we're good. So hook it in, close it, and Voila, oh, backwards, other way, this way. So if you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can find all of the links to the materials that we used um, at beadplace.net. The links are gonna be in the description. We have kits available for these projects to make it easy for you so you don't have to buy whole big spools of wire if you just wanna give it a shot. Otherwise, it's cheaper in the long run if you make jewelry to buy big whole spools of wire and then you have a ton to play with. So all the tools that we used are also gonna be um, on the website. You can find those. Um, and then, like I said, if you enjoyed watching this video, we do put out more videos, um, usually at least once a month, sometimes two a month, like this month. Um, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and um, subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks for watching.